Hi, I am Dr. Sakir Mansur, and today I will discuss with you classification of bone or the bone types. You could see this is the human skeleton, and there are the various types of the bones. You could see, and each and every one of the bone is separately discussed. Right? So let's move on. Here you could see here in the start, this is sternum, the flat bone, this is patella, the sesamoid bone, this is cuneiform, the small bone, and the vertebra irregular bone and the long bone femur so let's go by a system in our video lecture one by one definition of a bone is a living tissue is highly specialized and hard form of the connective tissue that constitutes most of the skeleton types of the bones bone occurs in two forms compact and cancellous cancellous is also called called spongy the trabecular bone compact bone looks as a solid mass and the cancellous bone is made up of a branched network of trabeculae. Trabeculae are organized so as to deliver resistance against mechanical strain and stasis. Here you could see this. This is the shaft of a long bone is a tube of the compact bone, right, which is surrounded by a uh, you know, uh, compact bone is outside and the inside is a spongy bone. Here's the spongy bone. This is a compact bone, right? Here you could see this. This is the way with it. And inside, it is the medullary cavity, the bone marrow. And note the arrangement of the tubercle to act as struts to resist both tension and compression forces the upper end of the femur. You could see this. They follow the laser and these are the tubercle, right? So the regional classification, first of all, the classification type is the regional bone classification. Bones are classified regionally or according to their general shape. Regional classification, the next table, bones are arranged into two main groups, axial skeletons and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton comprises of elements consisting central axis of the body and the appendicular skeleton comprises of bones forming the lower and the upper bone limb girdle, lower and the upper limb girdle and extremities. Here you could see this is the axial skeleton. There were the total 80 bones, so total 206 bones in the body, 206. So the axial skeleton, the, the skull, right, the cranium, eight bones, the face, 14 bones, and the auditory or the ear ossicles, the six. And the hyoid bone is one, and the vertebrae including sacrum and coccyx, the 26, sternum is one, and there are ribs, the 12 pairs, and the 26 in number. And now the appendicular skeleton, this is the number one of that, the upper limb part, the shoulder girdles, the clavicle, two, and the scapulae, two. Upper extremities, humerus, two, radius, two, ulna, two, and the carpals are 16, eight in each side. Metacarpals are the 10, right? Five in each type, and the phalanges are total 28. And now we go on to, go on to the appendicular skeleton part two, the lower limb part, the pelvic girdle, the hip bone of the os coxi, the two bones, and the lower extremities, femur 2, patella 2, fibula 2, tibia 2, tarsals 14, metatarsals 10, phalanges 28. So again, I repeat, the total bones in the human body are 206, 206 bones. So upper ex this is summary, the table, upper extremities, right 32, left 32, 64 bones in the lower extremities, right 31, plus left 31, 62 bones, as I told you already, right? So total are 126 bones in the upper extremities and the lower extremities. So the classification according to shape, very, very important. In classification, according to general shape, bones are arranged into five main categories. Long bone, short bone, irregular bone, flat bone, and the sesamite bone. So long bone, right? This is the long bone that are present in limbs. For example, the femur. This is the femur, long bone. Humerus, metatarsals, metacarpal, and the phalanges. Their length is more than their breadth. This, is, this length is more than their breadth. This is the short bones. You see the cuneiforms in the foot. 
and present in the foot and hand, and the, the talus, calcaneum, scaphoid, and the lunate. The, the scaphoid and the lunate are present in the upper limb, carpal bones. They are cuboidal in shape and are cons and consist of cancellous bone that is surrounded by a thin layer of the compact bone. Then the irregular bone. You could see vertebra is an example. And they have different shapes other than long, short, or flat. For example, the bones of the skull, vertebra, and the pelvic bones, the hip bones are also irregular. And the bones of the skull are also irregular. And the vertebra is a typical example. Flat bones like the sternum or the chest bone, right? So this is shaped like a sword. Commonly under protective functions. They render protective function, functions. For example, flat bones of the cranium protect the brain. Flat bones, the vault of the skull, for example, sternum, the frontal, and the parietal bones. These are all flat bones. And in the last, according to shape, is the sesamite bones. For example, patella. This is patella over here. This is, you know, kneecap. This is the knee joint over here. This is the femur. This is the tibia and uh, develop in some tendons and are present where tendons cross and the long bones and limbs. These protect tendons from excessive wear and usually change the angle of tendons while they pass to their attachments. So in the last, this developmental classification in short, the detail would obviously be in the histology and the embryology. In membranous bone formation or the intramembranous ossification during embryonic period, mesenchymal model of bones form, and direct ossification of mesenchyme starts in fetal period. The example of the facial bones and the bones of the vault of the skull. And the cartilaginous bone formation, also called as the endochondral ossification cartilage model of bones develop from the mesenchyme during the fetal period and bone afterwards replaces most of the cartilage. Examples of the, are the bones of the limbs and the vertebral column. And also the, the combination of this one and two, the membranocartilaginous bones are ossified partly in cartilage and partly in membrane examples include clavicle, mandible, and occipital and sphenoid. So thank you very much. Stay tuned for more lectures now for the general anatomy I have focused for you. And uh, it will be coming now next topic very soon. We'll be making some videos of the, you know, general anatomy.